All right, Q and A time. Welcome. All right. Any questions that I may answer? Boo Boo, can you close the door, please? You can still build it. Just close the door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. My son's setting up a game, Kerplunk. Yeah, just set it up. I'll play after I'm done teaching. Hey, AJ. Hey. I have a question. Oh, this is the question that you forgot? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, go for it. Um, so when putting together a portfolio, how many pieces are usually expected? And what type of like pieces are they usually looking for? Um, I'd say to the first question, you know, obviously the more the better. Uh, and usually, I mean, there's no real number. It's not like uh, there's going to be somebody who's like, oh, you know, you only have 10 pieces of portfolio pieces. We were looking for 11. Sorry. <laughs> how are you? We were thinking about it, but seeing as how unprofessional you are, never mind. Um, I think like 10, like a, a dozen or so, or more than that. You know, a good amount of work that can show that you can do the work consistently. You know? So, for instance, the stuff you did for my class, if you did the three or four characters, right, if you paint them up, um, that's about five to six, there's like potentially six pages of portfolio, right? You have one page of the thumbnails and iterations, and then you have the final page of the render, right? Yeah. That's good. That's good. And then, uh, you do this for the next one, then the next one. So for every character you have finished, you have essentially two pages, right? Okay. Okay. And then, um, in terms of what people are looking for, it depends on who you're talking to. If you're going to a company like Pixar, they're probably not going to hire you with the work you did. Not because it's not good. It's because they're Pixar and they're looking for like more animation. You know? Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's like a confusing thing I think people get caught up in uh, where they think, oh, you know, there has to be a specific thing. Now, it's like if you were to imagine that you were selling fruits, right? And you're selling fruits, but this guy loves apples. And all you have to sell is oranges. Doesn't mean that your oranges are of any value to anybody. Just not to the guy who wants apples, right? Yeah. Um, and so another way of thinking of it too is that, like, if you had like apples and oranges and pears and peaches, you have like all a variety of work, right? Um, but you don't have a lot of it, you know. So then the guy who wants apples will say, "I want to buy five apples. You only have one. Although you sell apples, maybe you don't have enough for this guy." to want to buy from right so usually what i suggest people do is just have there's only really two things you can do right which is have good work right and try to get it in front of as many people as possible right the more people who the, that know of your work and how you work uh, the more your chances are increased to to get a job in this industry, you know. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Yeah, set it up, son. Let me know when you're done. Um, he's just talking to me. Uh, yeah, like, okay, Julian, tell me when you're done, okay? I'm teaching right now. And so, uh, yeah, I, like I said, don't worry at all, really, about that kind of stuff because it's, like, or like, what I mean by this, like, don't worry about all the little things that you can get distracted by. A lot of people are focused on all these different things, you know, and they think, well, you know, how am I going to get a job if I don't do what is required of me, A, B, and C? No, really, what people want is good work. There is like a, I think someone posted on Discord and we were talking about it last night, me in the class. Uh, and they were like, you know, one of the students was kind of confused about it. He's like, you know, 
like on the on the one hand, like you know, these guys are saying you need to have this, and have that, but then I've heard you talk about like it's not that big of a deal to have these different things. And I'm like, it isn't. Like, just think about it from the perspective of a hiring manager, okay? Right? Like, yeah. always think of it from the perspective. Now, think about the kind of shallow stuff that some people might say that you might need in your portfolio. Do you think that you would really? Do you think that if you had an amazing set of work but a very bad presentation of the work? Or not even bad, just like a mediocre presentation that they would be like, you know, we were thinking about hiring you and you're really close, but the presentation of your work is god awful. So sorry, we're not gonna give you that job. Right? Or like 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 I just made the example of earlier, right? You know, we're looking for people to have at least twelve pieces in their portfolio to hire them. Again, it's just like a weirdly shallow <laughs> and unreasonable way of critiquing somebody's work. But yet, people do critique people's work this way. Like, oh, you need more pieces, or uh, you need to have more of this in your portfolio, or more of that in your portfolio, right? Like all these kind of weirdly superficial answers, okay? Um, really, what people are trying to do is not be mean, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's easier to say, yeah, you need more environments in your portfolio, even though you don't want to be an environment artist. Right, then to say you're just a really terrible character artist, <laughs> right? And that's why we don't want to hire you. We don't want to hire you because you're no good, you know. And I didn't realize that until you know I went to many conventions and you know I would hear all kinds of different advice, you know. And I came to realize that it wasn't that I was like I didn't have this or that in my portfolio. It's because I just wasn't good enough or I wasn't reaching the requirements of what they wanted in a, a portfolio. You understand? Yeah. And specifically what I mean by this is like they just don't want to hire me because I don't have anything of value to them. Okay? That's really it. That's all it comes down to. Okay? So if you go back to Art Station, I love doing this example. It's like, okay, let's say that I am a, a hiring manager or an art director about looking to hire some people, right? And before I get, oh, go any further, you know, let's make it very, let's make a very clear disclaimer. Most of the artwork that's on this front page is pretty amazing. Would you agree? It's pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So the question now is I'm hiring people to do vehicle design. Okay? Like, we need vehicle design. You understand? Yeah. So now, with that being said, you see how quickly our our focus changes to things that are only vehicles now, right? Not to say that this person right here who's drawing potentially this kind of fish monster thingy, right? Yeah. It's not that it's bad. It's not what we're looking for. But this... Like, this might be worth looking at. Let me go back. I should have control clicked. Or this is pretty good. This might be decent. But these are, like, modelers. So I'm looking for designers. Right? So I'll check their portfolio. And there's only one, so maybe I wouldn't hire this guy. Or maybe I'd give him an art test. Let's check this guy out. So he has his one vehicle. He's definitely just a modeler. But he has got some of these. Wait, hold on just a second. Sorry, I just had to yell at my son for a second. He's like singing really loud. <laughs> it was really distracting. It's okay. I don't mind him singing. It's just like he's like setting up. He's like de 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 as he's setting up the game. Um. And so yeah, maybe I wouldn't hire this guy. So then we just keep digging, right? And then I'm like, maybe no one here is worth looking at. And so I just type in vehicle and just see what we can go through here, right? So like, here's something cool. This looks like it's designed, right? And then if we get more specific, if I was saying sci-fi vehicles, right? So then I would ignore all these normal looking cars, right? And just keep digging. And that's just how it goes, right? So, oh, this guy is really good. Actually, he is really good. I might actually look into hire this person. Oh, look, he already works this way. He works for um, Mirror's Edge. 
This is badass. Right? Sparth, obviously, he already works. He's our director over at Bungie. Or not Bungie, 343. You know? And so that's what it comes down to. Like, when people come reach out to me and they want to, you know, hire me for work, right? Like, it's usually the kind of stuff I draw, like characters and creatures of, of the sort. You know? So, that's usually what I want people to focus on whenever they try to build their portfolio. It's not so much how much or what's in it. Uh, really, just quality. And do what you love. And if you don't know what I mean by quality, then look at the many artists that are clearly better than you, right? And that is the quality you need to reach. You have to realize that a lot of these people that you admire are also your competition. Okay? I learned that firsthand when I applied for a job. And they're like, oh, yeah, we gave it to Carlo Aureliano. And Carlo was one of my teachers. Right? And I was like, oh, yeah, good good choice. Right? So imagine, like, applying for a job. Right? And then, like, finding out, oh, sorry, we, we gave the job to uh, Anthony Jones. You know? Yeah. It changes your perspective of what you really need to have in your portfolio. Now, does, yeah, it, for sure. does that mean that you, you have to be that good, like, right away? No, obviously not. Take your time. And does it mean that you have to be as good as I am or many of these other people to be able to get a job at all? No, of course not, right? Just the quality of jobs will vary with your skill. And maybe in the beginning, you won't get the best, biggest and baddest jobs, you know? But with some time... Uh, you will. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Yeah, but if I had to give you a number right now, um, yeah, 10, 10 or 12 is a good number to start with. Uh, maybe 24 is a good number to have, like, carry around with you. It's not too many, so you don't have that person sitting here for an hour looking through all your images. You know? Uh, but if it's, like, on your website or whatever, you can have as many as you want. Because people can just cycle through it as fast as they need to. Right? It's, like, in person, you don't want to have them cycle through 100 images. Like, whenever I, if I were to show a portfolio, I, I don't show, like, a hundred of my, I have literally hundreds of images. So I only show, like, what I are feel are the best images that I have. But for a lot of you, you might not even have a lot of images that you feel are the best. So it's, it's more about the minimum, right, versus the maximum. So hope that helps. Yeah, it definitely helps, for sure. I guess I just need to stop focusing on the little stuff. Yeah, I get it, though. You know, hear all this, like, you want to make sure that you you get the best out of your, your portfolio. I understand. But uh, here's, a, here's a good way of thinking about this, too, is, like, imagine, you know, imagine the same kind of conundrum, but with, like, a sport, right? Like, um... Like, do you think if I get the next, the new Nikes, I'll be able to run a little bit faster against Usain Bolt? Probably not. Most likely not. Not probably. <laughs> Unless <laughs> Nikes are, like, infused with some sort of Nas technology. You know, and it like, literally makes it like they're, like, robotic shoes. You hear what I'm saying? Like, like what, what you should really be worrying about if you're trying to, a compete at an Olympic level in running, right, is just being an Olympic runner, not in the, the tools or the subtleties of the tools, right? Now, if you're an Olympic runner, then that kind of stuff starts to potentially matter, right? Because the other people you're competing in are at the t top of their own physical uh, capabilities, you know? So every little advantage might count, 
you know? Yeah. But, but from the grand scheme of things, it's like, no, not really. Like, so for instance, maybe for me, if I had a better presentation in my portfolio, I would do a better job, you know? Maybe if my website was that much better in presentation, maybe my, I would sell out faster or sell more classes or tutorials, you know? But it's superficial and s subtle. Like, first, first and foremost, the reason why my work sells or does well is because it's, it's reasonably good, you know? That's it. Like I just post this on Facebook. It's going to get, you know, a, a good appreciation. Not because I presented it on Facebook, the greatest p platform to post stuff on. No, it's Facebook's Facebook, right? And so uh, concern yourself less with, like, what's in, like, what your portfolio is about, but what's in your portfolio. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, and like uh, I mentioned before, uh, you know, like you guys will get good over time, so your portfolio will evolve naturally. You know, you'll you'll naturally cycle out your bad work, you know, and then eventually all the stuff that's in front of your in front on the front stage of your or artistic ability is all your best work. Can we send we can we send you stuff over time? Yeah, like now, how quickly I'll get to you might you know vary. You know, it's not like the class where I can get to your stuff like almost as, as soon as we have class started, right? Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm always down to check it out and see the progress. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, you guys invest in me, I invest in you. Yeah, this class has been really helpful. I'm glad to hear that. I learned a lot. <laughs> That's good. I'm happy that you learned a lot. Yeah, like I said, go to events, as many events as possible, so that way you can like really um, get a scope of how people look at your portfolio. But you'll, you'll hear a variety of things almost always. You know, and that's what I'm trying to say is like that variety of stuff that you might hear or get scrutinized, you know? Um, sometimes you just got to take it at face value and be like, well, maybe they're just saying this because they don't like my work. Or maybe they're saying this because my work isn't what they're looking for, you know? And so then maybe you can restructure your question to them is like, you know, what what do you think, you know, like looking at my work, what is like the number one flaw that you see in my artwork? Specifically my artwork, you know? And then they'll tell you maybe that, again, it's something that you might have to listen to and just kind of reconsider if it's advice that you need to follow because sometimes if they're like uh, an art recruiter they won't have the best answer but like if you can get your your stuff in front of like an art director or a concept artist usually they'll be able to help you out but even then you know and what I'm trying to say is that like you should always be listening to people's advice no matter who they are right really you should but you should also you know filter the advice so for instance if someone told me back in the day like I needed to put more environment in my portfolio there was a time where I believed that it was true, but then as I got better and better, I realized, no, it's not necessarily true. And so when people tell me, like, as I was evolving, uh, if people told me that, I would just be like, he's like, well, you know, I want to be a character concept artist. Like, so what is it that I can do to keep my characters uh, more impressive, you know? And so I, I appreciate the arts of environments. You know, I've done some here and there. It's just I prefer characters. Right? And if their advice is just like, oh, you know, you'll have a hard time getting jobs, I would ignore that. Because I, of course, getting jobs is difficult, no matter what you do, right? And if I'm going to get a job, I want to get a job doing what I want to do, not what I could potentially do. Hold on just a second. Okay, son. Are you, I know you're not done. Keep going, boo-boo. Oh, you said you love me. Oh, I love you too, boo-boo. I thought you said you are done. Yeah, I'm almost done, baby. I'll help you. Yeah, it's like, for instance, I had um, Jason Chan critique my work, and he said, you got to work on your edges. And I was like, okay. And I worked on my edges, and he was right. You know, I just sat down and studied as much as I possibly could. I looked at his work religiously for, like, years.
Okay. Okay. Baby, I'm still, son, I'm still teaching, okay? I'm still teaching. Yeah, I'm still teaching. So just finish the Kerplunk setup. But, uh, anywho. Uh, yeah. Quality of work and getting people to see it. That's the two things that you, you can really control. Everything else is just kind of whatever. Hi, AJ. What's up, bud? I have a simple uh, question. What? So that's a uh, simple. <laughs> yeah, this is the easiest one. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Not... I think we, you, you've, you've proven that you don't have simple questions. We'll see. No, this is easy. I saw that uh, you use uh, that uh, software, uh, Lazy Mizumi. Oh yeah. How do you use it? Because you you, you don't uh, use a uh, line art. Oh, I just do it sometimes because it just makes my brush a little smoother. Like the strokes, it like corrects just the minor imperfections of the tablet. Oh, okay. And then every once in a while I'll draw like a little lips and I want it to be perfect. And it has a really good ellipse tool. But I usually take my own advice on stuff like that and, you know, just be better at painting ellipses. Yeah. It is a simple question. You were right. Yeah. Can I tell you a funny story since uh, this is the last uh, time we meet? What? I hope it's not the last time we meet. <laughs> maybe we'll we'll meet again. You never know. Yeah, maybe. Uh, uh, remember when you did the, the level up uh, session? Yeah. Yeah, I heard you that time talk and you said uh, that you you check uh, uh, other people artwork. The like uh, I like the your uh, your interview there, so I sent you I sent you my work. It was uh, I think two years ago. Uh -huh. I'm still beginner. Yeah, and and uh, you didn't reply. No. Now I see that uh, you didn't even get the message because of <laughs> Facebook tell you. Yeah, but, the, uh, they, the Facebook changed their messaging system, right? Where yeah. like I have to like accept it, and it, it wasn't always like that. I used to it used yeah. to just get every single message that came to me, and I think they changed it again because all of a sudden I got like eighty new messages, and I was like, "What?" And I'm like, "Oh, I think." Yeah. It. So I, I was actually planning on this weekend going through every single one, but I probably won't yeah, get to years. It's two years ago, you said. Yeah, long time. Yeah, trust me, man. <laughs> like uh, you know Andre from THU. Yeah. Like yeah, he reached out to me once, and I didn't see it either. And he wanted me to do a talk at THU, which I'm like, oh, man. And now, uh, I don't know if I'll have that but, Yeah, but at, uh, at that time, I was uh, pretty insecure about my work. So I thought he, he, that he thought uh, that my work is so bad that he uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't even bother no. talking to me. No, no, no. Yeah, so, yeah, I was uh, insecure, so, so I thought he, he was just an, you know yeah. what? Actually, I do remember that. I remember looking at your work and thinking, man, this guy's so bad. I don't even want to look at his work. I remember thinking yeah. exactly that. Of course not, dude. I'll never think that. Yeah, no, I, I was just uh, insecure about my work <laughs> at that time. But uh, then I I thought that uh, even though this guy is uh, an a-hole, he uh, he's, has uh, a good advice. <laughs> and they started uh, buying your camera. <laughs> you thought you thought I was a hole. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. No, I started liking you a little bit more. But now I like you a lot. I know that. Uh, I know why you have uh, a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I didn't get to see it. No. No. Man. Uh, it's so it funny. My, yeah, that happens a lot, man. Like I have friends who who get messages like like people get pissed. And so that's my advice. Yeah. Like you didn't do anything. You just felt, you felt indifferent, right? What well, my advice yeah. is, if someone doesn't get to you, realize that they're not entitled to. You know, they don't have to do anything, right? And so uh, yeah. one one thing that I would say too is, like, it's not that some people aren't, um, like, everyone says that they're busy. It's not. That's not entirely true. Most people are 
like we aren't celebrities like Brad Pitt. Like where we like I'm sure Brad Pitt gets millions of like, yeah, he counts, like uh, tens of thousands of <laughs> emails. Yeah, like there's no way he can reasonably get to every single person that writes to him, right? Even if he wanted yeah. to, that would be like a full time job. <sighs> Impossible. Yeah, but for us it's not like that. Like it's usually a few dozen in a week, which is not a lot. Uh, and I built a really good system back in the day where I would just use voice messages, right? which is really easy. And um, yeah, so uh, but there was one time my friend he he got a like he was out on dinner, and he had his phone he had his phone but he didn't check it. He was like hanging out with friends and family, and he got a post from somebody around that time, like when he was at dinner, and then uh, and then he didn't check it obviously because he was like trying to pay attention to the people that he was surrounded by, right? And then uh, the, that person was like, hey, what's up? You know, I'm a big fan of your work. I would love to, like, you know, talk to you and ask for some advice, whatever. I don't know what he said specifically. It, it started off pretty genuine and pretty honest, right? And then, like, about an hour later, the guy writes, like, I see how it is. You know, you think you're too good to talk to small guys, right? And, like, my yeah. friend, again, has no idea this is being this happening. And the guy goes on and on and like for like the next hour to just like like berating my friend who has yet to respond or even see any of this stuff, right? And eventually like my friend goes home, he he checks his phone, he sees like he's like dozens of messages from this random person and he's just like, What the and he he starts reading it and he's like he's watching this guy like start from being really like sincere to starts to become really aggressive to then all of a sudden to like um starts to be apologetic and then angry again you know it's like what the you know and and it is like when he told me about this it's like man the inner workings of some people right like the the inner monologue that goes on in people's heads is so much more dangerous yeah. than what's actually being said or told to them and so um uh yeah he responded back and he's like whoa he's like dude i was at dinner with my family <laughs> you know like yeah, like I, and he's like, it's unreasonable for me to respond to every single person at that moment, you know? He's like, even yeah. if you were, like, a close friend of mine, <laughs> I wouldn't have responded, you know? Uh, yeah. And uh, the guy was like, oh, my bad. Like, he really was super apologetic. And then he was like, oh, I guess, you know, I'm really drunk right now. He's like, oh, okay, <laughs> that makes it better. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make it better. Yeah, So so don't do that. Don't assume yeah. the worst. I'm glad you told me that story, because it's funny because you you yeah. realize that now like I I clearly wasn't doing it maliciously. I just didn't see it. <laughs> I just because, didn't see uh, it. Yeah, I, I, what you said uh, before. Uh, actually, I'm uh, the opposite about uh, insecurities, because uh, when I grow up, I was uh, the best artist uh, at school, and. Uh, oh, sure. And, uh, and my father is uh, is an artist, and he's the one uh, who hires uh, the art teachers in uh, in school. So oh, great. so yeah, so all the the art teachers were uh, kissing my ass, and <laughs> and and I thought uh, I always get uh, got uh, the best uh, the best uh, mark. So I thought yeah. uh, I'm the best artist until I joined the I joined the, the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you realized. I'm. I realized I'm terrible. Yeah, you're yeah, not terrible. Thing. You just realize you weren't the best anymore. And and that's a relative yeah. term too. Best is kind of contextual. Like, what does that truly mean, right? And uh, yeah. you you're 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 uh, uh you're very you're very uh, smart though. You're very humble because you were able to kind of like step out of your throne and realize the the area of your ways kind of thing most people like I had, I had a student that was very much like you and he was really hard to teach because he truly believed he knew everything already right yeah i was like that uh, a few years ago <laughs> okay so maybe i got you right when you learned that that's not a very strong that's not a very tactical mentality to have if you want to improve right right there's a great mark twain quote where he says it's it's okay i'm almost done too it's a Mark Twain quote, which was, "It's better to be, it's better not to know anything, right? Or not to know the things that you, you don't know, right? Yeah. Than it is to claim you know something, right, and be wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it's better to think that you're, you, you're ignorant, 
than it is to or like to know that you're ignorant about something than it is to believe that you you're right and be absolutely wrong because it's very dangerous you know especially for your learning and that's what happened with this guy like i was constantly like so you got to work on your values he's like my values are great dude i'm like no they're, they're not i can see that they're not he's like dude i've been painting for like years like i'm really good at my values like it's not it can't be my values i'm like dude it's your values for sure and i was like also your anatomy needs to work he's like dude i've done lots of life drawing like, i'm really good at life drawing and i was like okay but you know and he was really stubborn he wasn't uh like we wouldn't argue or anything he just would be it'd be really hard for me to convince him you know yeah and then uh and then like i remember like one day like i just kind of had enough of this type of like attitude that he was having towards like my criticism because he just wasn't improving and he just kept on saying well it must be something else like, i feel like i can do something else and so yeah and I, I, i'll tell him like i would ask him like do you feel like you can improve right like do you feel like there's a room for improvement you know and he's like mm -hmm. well yeah of course right and i was like, all right great so now do you think that your work is the greatest work um ever right and he's like no of course i don't think that and i was like, all right great and I was like, now think of your favorite artist. Like, what is your favorite artist? Or name your favorite artist, right? If you have him. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's this artist. And I was like, okay, great. Now, you think this person's great? He's like, yeah, I think he's amazing. You know? I was like, okay, cool. Now, I pulled up his artwork, and I pulled up the, the artwork of the, the student. I put up the, the artwork that he was inspired by and the artwork of my student, and I put them right next to each other, right? Yeah. And I was like, what is the differences? What is it about his work that you think you're not doing? Right, and it was priceless because he was just like, my values, they don't look as good as his. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I was like, what else? It's like, dude, my, his anatomy is just like spot on. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, shoot. You know, he started to realize, like, I had to do that to him. I had to, like, show him literally the differences. And not from my words, but just in the words of, or in the, the scope of someone else's artwork, someone that he had truly admired. And that's when he yeah. started to open up his eyes and say, all right, tell me everything you know then. And I was all right, and I did. And he got really good. He got better, like mm -hmm. uh, remarkably fast, because he stopped being so stubborn, right? And he stopped complaining and started arguing with me after that. And uh, and that's not to say that I know all the answers, but like, uh, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm above most of you guys in skill. And all that means is that I can recognize your guys' weaknesses better than you can, you know? That's all it really means, because I've done that, been there, you know? And uh, uh, what I told him, too, is, like, you know, I asked him very similar. I was like, what, what was your, like, life like when you were in school and when you are growing up? And it was very similar to what you said. Like, he was highly praised. It was the big fish in a small pond mentality, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he thought he was, like, a big fish in, like, the small little pond. And then when he went into the ocean and realized there's whales and sharks and, like, enormous <laughs> animals, and they're like, oh... I am actually the smallest, like second smallest thing in this goddamn ocean, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's what you realize, and it, it woke you up, and that's smart. See, the, the advantage that I had, like you said, like I'm the opposite. The advantage that I had was I was never told I was a good artist. I already knew I was terrible, you know? And that was a huge advantage because my peers who had very similar upbringings like you were always yeah. kind of slower about improving themselves, where I was like, full throttle because I knew I had a lot to, to work on, you know? Yeah. And uh, I was the worst of my class and then I ended up becoming the best of my class and I dropped out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and it had nothing to do with my talent. It had everything to do with my lack of uh, arrogance. Like, I always thought I was dope every time I would show somebody my work. I'd be like, yeah, man, I'm so good. Because I'll just I'll just get mildly impressed of my improvement, and then I show it to somebody who had a little bit more street cred than me, and be like, "Oh yeah, you're god awful." I'm like, "Oh yeah, I can see it now. Thanks for showing it to me." And I'll get back to work. And uh, I think that's truly what helped me grow, and I think that's something that I educate you guys. Right? I always tell you, side on the caution of ignorance, right? Because if you yeah. if you just assume that you don't know something, like if you try something and you're having a hard time with it, just be like, you know what? Maybe I just don't know enough, right? If you do that yeah. often, you'll improve often. But if you're like, well, it can't be me. It must be something else. It must be my tool. It must be the weather, like the butterflies. I don't see, I didn't see a butterfly today, so I'm not going to be able to draw today. No, you can't. No, don't do that because it's superficial and it's not real. 
Yeah, so, I mean, you've improved dramatically in the class, for sure. Like, you've done a lot of good when, uh, when I figured this out, uh, it was uh, about two years ago. I joined uh, a contest uh, by uh, Mark Bruni. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 he's doing another yeah. one, too. Yeah, so the first one that I joined, uh, the, uh, he didn't pick me. So I got mad. I started uh, commenting <laughs> and saying that uh, my art is uh, is better than these uh, these ones who picked. So <laughs> this guy commented. Uh, he told me to shut up, and, <laughs> and my art uh, is awful. But now I have to thank him because uh, just one year later I got uh, third place, and uh, you was uh, you were uh, the, the judge on uh, on that uh, competition. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah, dude. Yeah, get get it, man. Like, yeah, you know, it's it. Uh, I don't think that I always tell people, you know, you're allowed to be proud of your work. You're allowed to have some sort of pride of what you do. I think that's actually very healthy to be like, you know, I I, I do good work. Huh, boo boo. Yeah, I love you too, son. Okay, I'm almost done. One more minute, okay? Yeah, a little minute. Small as your little nosies. Okay. Um, yeah, like you know, it's. Uh, I forgot. I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Before my son came and gave me a hug. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I, anyways, what I'm trying to say is, you know, a little bit of pride is fine, you know, but too much pride is is paralyzing. Yeah. Right. Because then you don't believe anyone else when they're trying to tell you that you suck, and so um, like I. Uh, always contributed to a bad relationship. Like sometimes you spend a long time on a painting and you think, man, this is a great painting. But it's because there's little moments here and there in the painting that really inspired you and really motivated you, or you found a little bit of something that you didn't expect that you could do before and you just get, you know, entranced at that, right? Yeah. Um, but other people don't experience that. All they do is they see the garbage of your artwork, right? If it is garbage. Yeah. And then when you show it to them, they're like, oh yeah, it's garbage. You're like, what? And you don't see it, but it's like a bad relationship because, like, when you get, when you break up with that person or you leave them and you look back at the relationship, right? Mm-hmm. You you can say, like, yeah, why was I in that relationship for so long? The same thing with like bad paintings, you know, like why did I think that that was so good? <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> so it happens to the best of us. Um, sometimes people feel like all their paintings are awful. That's why, like, the, on the contrast, like if you don't think anything you do is good, it's also cancerous, right? Because if you don't feel that way, then it's also paralyzing in the opposite direction where you don't do any work. Mm. And so, yeah, I, I think you've done well, and I think you have clearly more room to improve, and uh, you'll you'll you know do great work. Definitely in a year's time, I think your stuff will be amazing. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Is there any last questions that I can answer quickly? Otherwise, I got to get going. My son's been waiting patiently. If you guys ever have anything you want to talk about or ask me in the future, feel free to just ask. Send it to me in Discord. I'll try to get to you guys as often as I can. Yeah, he wants to play Kerplunk. But uh, with that... What did you say? Okay, ready to play some Kerplunk. Yeah, man, I appreciate all you guys. It was an awesome class for me as well, all, as always. Love you guys. Keep working, keep painting, keep drawing. That's really the only thing you need to do. And if you keep doing that, you know, there's a, there's a variety of ways that you can improve. There's a variety of ways to learn and a variety of ways to know that you're messing up and screwing up. But the only way to do that is to keep moving. So keep moving, guys. Appreciate y'all. And then I'll uh, talk to you guys uh, in the future. Laters. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.